Good morning. I'm gonna turn this on. Let me know you can hear me. I'm in a I'm in a different spot this morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, it is Lauren Luna, Callie's daughter, Callie Gray's daughter, and I am here. I ran my daughter to school this morning. She's um, homeschooling this year, and she is at the, she, her little classroom is at our church. And I, um, so I raided my dad's house, and I'm like, Dad, I need to use your house for, for some prayer this morning. So <laughs> we were in a hurry, and I forgot my mascara. But I have my hoop earrings on, praise God. <laughs> All right, well, I'm so excited. So last night, Mom um, reached out to me and asked if I could do prayer this morning. And so this morning, I was, I I dreamed all kinds of things last night. And I don't even, I don't, like right now, if I was to think about what all I dreamt, I know it was a lot, but I can't remember a lot of it because I just got going and, and kept going. But, um... I heard right whenever I was waking up, um, overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. And so I, I looked up that scripture. And so if, if you had been in my week this past week, um, this past, well, I'll say the past two weeks has been pretty hectic for my family. We've been getting school started. We're in the process of selling a home and buying another home. Um, lots of just movement and things going on. And, um, and I, I started experiencing some real opposition. Um, you know, I, I say started, I've been experiencing some real opposition because how many of you know, whenever you start just doing what you feel like God's calling you to do, or you're supposed to do, and you're taking certain steps of faith or action, um, the enemy knows too. And, um, I was, I've almost been caught by surprise this last week with just feelings of um, depression and just, you know, weariness and, you know, how am I going to get through this next few weeks? And there's so much on me and yada, yada, yada. And um, I'm, I'm pretty certain the other night I was crying to my husband about being sad about getting old. So that just goes to let you know how... <laughs> how how just overwhelmed I was I was crying over the silliest things you know um he was like Lauren why are you crying I was like you don't understand getting old is so hard you know anyways okay um point is I just was dealing with a lot of have been just dealing with a lot of just opposition and battling just my feelings you know not 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 that necessarily outside things were happening to me some things on the outside has happened but um but more so just feelings, you know, and having try to manage those and just get, get through them and still walk in the spirit and all of that. And so, um, so this morning, so, so the other day, it was yesterday, I was just asking the Lord, I'm like, God, I need, how can I overcome this? How, what, give me a strategy or what do I need to do to just, you know, I always can kind of feel like my, my emotions, my feeling, my face, every time I do this, it makes my hand look really big, but um, can kind of go like this, right? And was just feeling kind of down and defeated. And so this morning, I woke up with that in my, in my spirit, overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. And I was listening to a message on the way over here that was just talking about overcoming temptation. And it was talking about overcoming temptation in every area. Um, you know, whether it's food, whether it's lust, whether it's, um, you know, anger, you know, just we, temptation comes to all of us all day long in all different kinds of forms, right? Um, but something, when I, when I looked up that scripture, I, I looked it up in the Passion Translation, and it's Revelation twelve eleven, and I'm saying all this to y'all because this is what's going to set our course this morning for prayer and what we're praying for and what we're believing for as women of God um, and how serious this is. Um, so 
in Revelations 12, 12, and I'll just start with 10. Then I heard a triumphant voice in heaven proclaiming, Now salvation and power are set in place, and the kingdom reign of our God and the ruling authority of his anointed one are established. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who relentlessly accused them day and night before our God has now been defeated, cast out once and for all. They conquered him completely through the blood of the lamb and the powerful word of his testimony. They triumphed because they did not love and cling to their own lives even when faced with death. So rejoice you heavens and every heavenly being. Um, so let's go back to, to that one, this one section reached out to me and this is what I want to, to say to, to y'all, especially if you have had any sort of opposition this week and any of that, um, for the accuser of our brothers and sisters, that's us. And the accuser is the devil, the enemy, who relentlessly accused them day and night before our God. So what I what God was ministering to me this morning is we get surprised way too often by the attack of the enemy. And we're called to be soldiers in the army of God. That's what we are. We are warrior women in the army of God. And what what the problem is, is that the enemy never forgets he's in a war. He always has a plan. He always is in, in fight mode. And he is always relentlessly attacking. Always. Relentlessly. What's the word relentless mean? It's consistently day in and day out. The Bible says, relentlessly accuse them day and night before our God. Relentlessly. I, I, um, what happens for me all too often, and maybe you, you want to admit this and maybe you don't, but for me all too often is I hear that we're in a spiritual war, but a lot of times whenever things are, you know, what as a, as a child of God will go through something tough and we're like, okay, I'm, I made it through that trial and then some sort of blessing or we'll feel, feel like just the blessing of God or something great will happen. And we're like, praise God, I made it through that trial. And now I'm walking in the favor of Jesus. And we let our guard down in those moments. And those moments can just be in a day, right? It could be like one day of everything went amazing that day. The check in the mail that really got there, got there that day. You know, your, your miracles, kids are acting amazing that day. And the guard is let a little bit down of our our station, if you will, of what where we're called to stand, our plan of action. All of that is just let down just a little bit, and and we forget that oh, this enemy that we're fighting day in and day out is relentless. He's he's not oh that plan didn't work or okay I threw this at her and she she fought against it and so. Let me just take a little break. He doesn't do that. He doesn't just take a little break. And but all too often we we like to take little breaks. And so then whenever the next day happens or the th three days after you've got this amazing victory and all hell's breaking loose at your house, you think to yourself, what in the heck is going on? I'm doing everything God's told me. We're supposed to be walking in the favor and the blessing of God. This is my new season. I've done crossed over to the promised land. Why in the heck am I having all this, this, you know, opposition? And it was like, where did you forget that you are cons like always in a war? Always like the war against principalities of darkness, the war against our flesh, the war against the, the spirit of God on the inside of, uh, of us is a relentless war. But here is the good, 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 good news. And this is what I want to, to encourage you with. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who relentlessly accused them 
day and night before our God, God has now been defeated, cast out once and for all. Praise Jesus. So he is defeated. I mean, in the, like, he is defeated. In the end, he's, he's, he's done. But while we're here on earth, there is still that daily of remembering, transforming our mind and our hearts to remember that he has been defeated. It is, it is over, right? They conquered him completely through the blood of the lamb and the powerful word of his testimony. They triumphed because they did not love and cling to their own lives, even when faced with death. So how do we triumph and how do we overcome? We overcome by the redemptive blood of Jesus and remembering. That's why it's so important to take communion on a regular basis and remember the redemptive blood of Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. That is, that is our, that is our strategy and our game plan to the enemy to put him in, in remembrance of who I am and the blood of Jesus that covers me and what he did for me on the cross and that he has already won. And then they triumphed because the powerful word of his testimony. And so not only are we putting ourselves in remembrance of, of the blood of Jesus and we're reminding the enemy, but we also need to declare with our mouths what God has done, what he has done. The And, and it has to be a daily declaration of the word of what God has done. And so whether that you wake up in the morning and it's like the heavens are singing and you're feeling awesome and you just know that just you're just going to have that favor day, you still have to declare and believe and speak and pray in the atmosphere to remind the enemy because he's there. He's just sitting back. He's, he might be waiting back for a little bit, but he's there ready to pounce, waiting for that vulnerable spot. But you have to remind him, no, buddy, I still got my guard up. Today may be a great day, but my guard is always up and my plan is always in place. And I know exactly who I am and I know exactly what God has done for me and what God's done for my family. And so whatever you may have in your back pocket, it's not going to happen today. And it has to be a consistent thing. I don't think if, if we were in a real, if there was a real war, like my, my brother, you know, fought in the army. If, I'm pretty sure that whenever he was over in Afghanistan, he was always aware that the enemy on the other side always had a plan to always be ready. I'm pretty sure he wasn't telling his his troops or the people that he was over like, hey, it's OK to just take a nap and sleep for a few days. It's going to be just fine. And I'm all for naps. I'm not saying that we can't nap, but you know what I mean? Napping in the spirit. And so we always have to be ready. And so it, this just, this ministered to me today because it was like reminding me like, Lauren, where did I ever tell you that you were going to have some amazing blessing in days of no attack? Nowhere. God gives us some blueprints on how to overcome and how to have a game plan for that attack and how to have some authority when the attack comes. He gives us the word of God. He teaches us how to put on our armor every single day. He gives us the the, the word of God is truly the sword of the spirit that is called to just completely cut every single bit of the enemy's plans. And so he gives us the strategy and what we should do, but he never says we're going to have these days and months of just not having to have any sort of fight because we are always in the fight. And so I want to just encourage y'all to what can you do to be ready? I, I heard this this morning. and I thought it was so good. What happens with a lot of people, what, what causes them to let their guard down. And so there, there's two ways that you can let your guard down. One is you can let your guard down whenever things are going really, really great. And you're just, you're just vulnerable. You're, you're just like, I'm, things are going good. And so it's okay for me not to read my word as much. It's okay for me not to wake up and, and pray and remind the en enemy of who, um, whose I am and who I am, you know, um, that's okay. And what it does is it makes you vulnerable to the enemy and it makes you vulnerable to his attack. It makes you vulnerable to temptation, temptation of whether to, you know, sleep, sleep too much, listen to music too much that you shouldn't be listening to. And I'm all for some, I love me some country music, but you know, too much of, my Aunt Cindy was saying the other day that she is not loving her today or he's done loving her today or something like that. I forgot what song it was, but it was something, something really depressing. Um, you know, you can't listen to that all day long and expect to have 
you know, confidence and be ready for battle. Um, but what happens is, is we have those few days of good, we get lowered in our guard and we're more susceptible to the enemy. We're more vulnerable. We're more vulnerable to temptation of, of just, you know, I'm going to sleep in or I'm not going to pray. I'm going to Netflix and chill all day long, or I'm going to go and eat with my friends and relax and just, you know, be loose with my mouth and just gossip. And, and it makes us vulnerable to the enemy's attack. And so when that attack comes, it's like, where in the heck did this come from? And then we're, then we're like, God, you know, why is this happening to me? And the whole time he's like, I didn't forget you were in a war. You did. You know, it's like, hey, get up, sister. <laughs> I have everything for you. You're just, you know, I'm, I'm going before you, but you've got to, you got to wake up. Um, but another thing that can make us put our guard down is disappointment. And I heard something so good um, this morning. It said, don't let your disappointment lead you to disobedience. Because what happens is, is when we get dis disappointed in something that, um, we feel should have happened or could have happened and it doesn't work out the way that we think it should. Our attitude towards God can, can have this disappointed, okay, this didn't happen God the way I wanted it to. And so then when he asks us to do something, we're, we're more tempted to, to be disobedient. It's like, you know, oh, well, you didn't do that thing for me. Well, you didn't, God, you didn't, pull through like I thought you were, or that, that plan didn't quite work out the way I thought. And so I'm not going to do what you tell me to do today. You know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to go out with my friends and have a little too much margarita, or I, I'm, I'm going to look at something that I shouldn't, you know, or I'm going to entertain this conversation that I shouldn't, or I'm going to, I'm going to be loose with my mouth and I'm going to listen to nothing but secular music for a few weeks and not read my Bible or I'm not going to stand up in church and worship. I'm going to sit back and, and be upset, you know? And what happens is, is that's also extremely vulnerable to more and more of the attack of the enemy and deception, you know? And, and once you're deceived, oh Lord, once you're deceived, the only, only way you can get out of deception is to believe somebody that tells you that you're deceived even when you don't believe it, like that's it. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's a hard thing to get out of. So, um, I, I was reminded this morning of Joseph and Potiphar's wife, whenever he, he had had some disappointment throughout his life. He had had a lot of disappointment and he is in the, he is, he is in the, the palace and Potiphar's wife, this, you know, she was probably a good looking cougar is what I, what I heard this morning, you know, he was young and he was good looking and she was coming after him. And, um, but the Bible talks about her being relentless. It was, it was day after day. And, and it's a representation of how the enemy can be with us, you know, just relentless attack to take us out for what God has destined us to do. And something that, um, something that the pastor said whenever I was listening to him this morning, he said, you know, he could have, when she grabbed his coat, she was, she was kept coming and, and he, she grabbed his coat. You know, he could have loved that coat so much that he was like, oh, okay, I'm going to go ahead and just give in and cause I want my coat back, you know? And he basically said, you know, his, his, uh, willingness to lose something that he cared about. Cause I'm sure he loved his coat. Coats back then were pretty important. They weren't like, Oh, this little jacket I was throwing, I don't mind losing it. You know, your wardrobe then was pretty, pretty valuable and important. So <clears throat> the fact that he was willing to lose his coat, lose something he cared about, lose something he probably wanted to keep, to be willing to keep the reputation of his name and his integrity with the Lord was pretty amazing. And, you know, when the attack was coming, he probably knew in his, his own his own self he wasn't strong enough, but the 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 Lord gave him a strategy, and that strategy was to run, leave what you want to keep, and run. And sometimes, you know, what is it that the enemy is coming at us with, and that we're trying to negotiate with him? Of, I want to 
I, I, I don't want to let that go, God. You know, well, if I run from the enemy, I'm going to have to to let go of this, this, or that. You know, I, I'm going to have to, whatever that might be. Um, I, I just was like, man, that's pretty powerful when you think about it. You know, how much he already, he, he knew that his, the things that he cared about were not worth doing what him being obedient to the Lord and his, his integrity with the Lord. And, um, so anyway, so I just, I want to encourage you this morning to be obedient, regardless of what you see going on on the outside, be obedient, regardless of what your disappointment may be, be, um, ready for the enemy every single day. Be reminded that you are in a war and that you are not some weak individual that does not have a game plan and does not have the tools or the weapons necessary to defeat your enemy. God has you on this call and he has you a part of this movement for a reason. He is not picking a bunch of weak women that are just sitting back and have no clue how to fight the enemy or how to overcome the devil. He is picking victorious women who 100% know who their enemy is and aren't going to be, um, what's the word, not distracted, surprised by his attacks. And so I want to, um, I want to pray and I want to pray some of these prayer points. If y'all haven't started a prayer hub right now, I encourage you get on the Tetelestai website, get started in a prayer hub. These prayer hubs are amazing. Um, I have my first prayer hub today in Mont Bellevue. So if you're in the Mont Bellevue area and you want to join us, it's going to be from one to, um, about two fifteen. And we're going to, I'm going to share about what these prayer hubs are, but they are getting launched all over the country. And they are women on fire for Jesus that are helping usher in a revival for this world. And so, um, we're praying for our families. We are praying for our, for our, um, for our politicians and for our government. We're pl praying for our schools and for our families and for our children and for revival. And so if that's something that you want to do, definitely reach out and do that. And then if you are going to be in the Houston area, or if you want to just fly and come see us, we are going to have our crowned event January the 19th to the 21st. And we are having 2000 women come and worship the Lord, get equipped, um, just warriors for Jesus. I'm going to be there. Um, mom, so many amazing, amazing women of God and speakers are going to be there. And so we want you to get your ticket and definitely join us. And then also join us for her voice. I'm so puffy this morning. Lord help me, but I don't care because I'm a warrior for Jesus. Okay. So, um, I am going to pray this morning, a few of these little decrees over your families and over ours. And so, but first I want to pray over the family. And so Lord, um, we just pray for the Holy Spirit to fill his people with passion, to see families healed and healthy, to strengthen marriages and to teach children the ways of God. We pray for wisdom on reconciling your family's relationships, on how to speak life to those around you, how to uphold God's design for family within culture at large. We pray against the spirits of sexual immorality morality of conflict of rebellion from operating in our families and from and for the Lord to release obedience and abundance commitment honor love peace and patience for our families and so God I decree that marriages and families are blessed with love with joy with peace and grace of Jesus Christ that every home is filled with the presence of God prayer and with the word I decree that every member and every life conceived is honored protected nurtured and loved. So God, I just thank you, Father, for that. I thank you, Father, for obedience for your children of God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that we will not get distracted. We will not get distracted by disappointment. We will not get distracted by any schemes of the enemy, Lord Jesus, but you are calling us to a greater level and awareness of obedience, Lord God, that we would hear your voice above every single voice telling us to go here and to walk here and to speak here and to declare. And, and God, I just thank you, Father, for an urgency in my sisters to never get complacent, never be to allow themselves to just rest and be vulnerable um, and and sensitive to the enemy's attacks, Lord God, but, but just to be ready and vigilant each and every single day. We rest in you, Jesus. 
We rest in you. We don't rest in ourselves. We don't rest in our own plans. We don't rest in our own feelings, God, but we rest in you, Jesus. And we know that we are always, always ready to fight the good fight of faith, God, and to be obedient to go and do what you've called us to do. And so, God, I just thank you, Father, for personal revival in every single one of these ladies, God, revival in their families. We pray for a surrendered heart and a burning hunger for God's word and for his presence. We pray, Lord Jesus, for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon us, Lord Jesus. God, I pray against the spirit of pride, the spirit of offense, the spirit of confusion, apathy, and the spirit of fear, Lord Jesus. I ask you to create a clean heart within us. I ask for forgiveness and I ask that we release forgiveness. God, I just thank you, Father, for your kingdom to come, Lord God. Your will be done in and through our lives. We pray for supernatural strength. We pray for prophetic clarity and insight. We ask for divine appointments to enter our paths today. We pray and petition for any specific request, Lord God. I thank you, Father, for every personal request being spoken. Um, I just saw a thing. I'm I'm praying from this. This is the uh, prayer hub book. So if you are doing a prayer hub or if you are wanting to, to launch one, you can get some of these on their, off their website. It's 1 million and there's all these amazing prayers on the inside of them and they're just so, so powerful. So I encourage you to get them. Um, so let's decree right now. I'm an overcomer in Christ Jesus. You are an overcomer in Christ Jesus. How do we overcome? By the blood of the lamb and by the word of the testimony of Jesus Christ. What has he done for you? Remind the enemy every single day what he has done. When the enemy wants to distract you of what he's not done, remind him of what he's done because I'm telling you the list of what he's done for me is far greater than anything that I feel he hasn't done. It is far greater. In fact, when you realize that your treasure in Jesus Christ is better than anything that this world could ever give you, and it truly, truly, truly is enough for you, then you can rest in the satisfaction that whether you get your miracle or whether what you're believing for happens or it doesn't happen, the treasure of Jesus Christ is enough. He is enough. He is enough. He is always enough. There are many men and women of God that never got on this side of earth what they were believing God for. And I know some people don't want to preach that and they don't want to say that and you don't want to hear that all the time because we want to get everything that we're believing God for. I, I want more passion in my marriage. I may never get more passion in my marriage. I want my kid to overcome anxiety fully. He's, he's, he's battled and I believe he's an overcomer. What if I watch him struggle with anxiety for the rest of my life? Do I believe that's going to happen? No. Should I stand in full faith that he is always going to, he's going to overcome the enemy and he's going to fully have freedom in that area? 100% yes, because that's what I'm called to do as a child of God and, and to remind the enemy of that and to, to walk by faith that he's fully victorious, whether he feels the feelings of anxiety or not. But I'm not going to to say, oh, you're just going to wake up and never feel those feelings ever again. And that's just the way that you may feel for the rest of your life. Because what if it's not? What if that's something that he God uses in his life for him to be consistently leaning on God for? Because we have to have Jesus. And sometimes we can get so caught up in I I'm, you know, something good happens and so I made this happen or I overcame and God's given me victor victory here here and here and then we lose sight of the treasure which is Jesus Christ and we think that we don't have to lean on him anymore. But as a soldier of God, you've got to get over the fact that some things you have to continue to believe and contend and believe God for. But there may be some things that you don't see fully come to pass in this life on, on earth. And so what's going to happen then? Is it going to take you out of the game? Or are you going to focus on the treasure, which is Jesus Christ? He really is enough. If your kids aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing and they're running like crazy, you know, you know, like my my grandmother would say, back crap crazy, and she wouldn't use the word crap. If they're doing things like that, or your husband's acting crazy, or you're, you know, you're whatever, 
business is falling apart or you can't control people, coworkers, or you're, you're always struggling in some area. You can't overcome the feelings of wanting to eat, you know, go by the Dairy Queen way too many times. And it's something that you've struggled with for years and years and years and years. What if you never get the feelings of victory? I believe you're victorious through Jesus. But, but what if, what if someone's sick in your life and they, they don't get their healing on this, on earth and their healing is in heaven? Is that going to take you out of the game or is Jesus the treasure enough? There's a big difference whenever you realize that he doesn't just love you, but he wants you to love him back. And it is truly a love affair. And he truly can show you through that love affair that he is enough. He is our treasure. He is all that we need. He is more than enough. If everything else goes away, all I need is my Jesus. That is truly enough. And when you, when you realize that that is enough and that is, you have every single thing that you need because you carry Jesus Christ on the inside of you, that's when the game changes. That's when you start really walking in victory because you're not concerned with what's going on on the outside or around you. All hell could be breaking loose all around you, but you've got the victory of Jesus Christ on the inside of you. Amen. And so I want to encourage you. I just want to pray God personal revival on each and every one of us, personal revelation that you truly are our treasure, that we're not going to get distracted by anything the enemy throws of us or the disappointments of this life. We're not going to let the disappointments of this life or our unanswered prayers or what we see not happening the way we want to see cause us to get us out of the game. But we're going to realize that we truly are in the fight. And that fight is for souls and for people to see that you are their treasure, God, and you are all that they need, God. You are all that they long for, Lord Jesus. And they are they are loved and redeemed and treasured through you and through your blood, God. And so we just thank you, Father, that we are an overcomer, that we have the full armor of God upon us, that every limitation, every barrier, every hindrance, every strategy of the enemy is broken off in Jesus' name, that our health, that our family, that our finances, our relationships, our friendships, our properties, our assets are fully protected in Jesus' name, that we walk in the love and the power and the compassion passion of Jesus Christ. I choose today, say this, I choose today to have a grateful heart. I choose today to have a forgiving heart. I walk humbly with God today. I am anointed. I am chosen. I am called of the Lord. I say yes to all he wants me to do in and through my life without hesitation. I say Yes, I had a sweet girl. Um, I, I'll, I'm going to end with this. Are you saying yes to the Lord today? Are you saying yes to what he has you do? Is is furthering the kingdom of God the first yes on your list today? Or is your priorities the, the first yeses on your list today? This says that they triumph because they did not love and cling to their own lives. Even when faced with death. Are you loving and clinging to your own life today? Or are you going to walk triumphant by not clinging to your own life today? I had a sweet, um, I've had a couple sweet, sweet ladies reach out to me this week about praying with their, um, with their groups of ladies that they're praying with. And, um, two different, two different ladies in a day. And, and I am, when I tell you I'm busy, that's an understatement. I, 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 I don't live week to week. I live day to day because if I live week to week, I'll be, I'll check myself out for the day because I'll feel so overwhelmed because there's so much going on in my life. My life is super full with kids and ministry and and work and all the things. Right. And um, I had a couple different ladies reach out to me and ask if I'd be willing to pray with them with their groups of ladies on a couple different days, random different days. And, you know, the the temptation that can rise up when we're, when, when something else is asked of us, um, is, oh gosh, I'm so busy. When, when can I fit that in? Right. Um, but I heard the Lord say, there's a yes in your heart, Lauren, 
Cause, cause there was, there's the, the, my spirit said yes, even though my, my flesh was like, my, my, and with neither of these precious ladies, my fresh, did my flesh even say no, but it was more so like, Oh Lord, are you, Oh goodness, are you going to be able to add that to your, to your busy week? And my spirit was saying yes, right? And the reason my spirit was saying yes is because those things being asked of me were things that could help further the kingdom of God, right? They weren't, they weren't someone saying, you know, they weren't like my, myself saying, oh, I've got to make sure that I, um, go to the grocery store today, which is important, but you know, unless you're talking to people at the grocery store, it's not necessarily furthering the kingdom of God. Now it's very important because you need to provide food for your family. <laughs> it wasn't, oh, I need to go get my nails done today. Or that's not my, my list of things, right? Um, I need to do paperwork. That's important. Um, but it's like, okay, I could stay up late and do paperwork. I could sacrifice some sleep because the sacrificing of maybe a little bit of sleep to do some paperwork later in the day so I can do some phone calls during the day to help pray for ladies is not loving my own life. It's dying a little bit to my flesh and it's being willing to move some things around so the things of God that are furthering the kingdom of God can become first on my priority list. And the Bible says you seek me, you seek the kingdom of God and all those other things that you worry about, that paperwork that you need to get done, that's important, right? That um, grocery shopping that you need to get done, that's important. That cleaning of your house that needs to get done because it's important. All those things will work themselves out. They'll be added unto you. They'll, they'll be taken care of, right? And so I just want to encourage you um, as your start, as you're doing today, prioritize your day in that way. God, let me put the things that are furthering your kingdom first. Let me pray first. Let me spend time on this prayer call at eight o'clock first. Let me read my word first. Let me worship first. Let me take this time to disciple my, my son or daughter in the car on their way to school first before I zone out, you know, um, then I can, I can do some of these other things. So, um, I just, I love you. I'm, I pray blessings over you and your family today. I just encourage you to just walk victoriously today and just rest in Jesus today. Let him be everything that you need today and uh, remind the enemy today. Be vocal. Speak your voice today and pray and remind the enemy every single day of what Jesus and his blood has done for you and for your family and for you personally. And I promise you, you will start having more peace and more joy and more assurance as the enemy tr comes against you. You will have a rest in the spirit of, of complete confidence in your God every single day. And so we just praise you. We worship you in Jesus name. I thank you father for all these amazing women. I love you so much. And I look forward to praying with you again. Y'all have an amazing day.